Good evening! I'm Stungun, and I am going to be showing you, in my very first YouTube video here, how to create a basic animation in Macromedia Flash MX Professional 2004. Granted, yeah, I know, it's an old version, and Macromedia has long since had their Flash stuff bought out by Adobe, but uh, I still like this particular version, simply because it's easy to use, not so much of a system resource hog, and yeah, it basically serves all my need for the basic Flash stuff. But I digress. I gotta show you guys this stuff. So naturally the first thing you're gonna need to do is actually create a new flash document. From there we will go straight into the stage view here. As you can see we've got our little canvas here that we can put stuff on but we don't have anything on that. And we've got our timeline here which shows all the frames and keyframes in our animation. These two are gonna be basically the heart of what we're working with through this. Now Macromedia Flash MX uses a frame and keyframe system. Basically what this winds up meaning is that uh, the particular animation is going to be made of things called frames and keyframes. Now this particular thing here, you see the dot here, that indicates it's a keyframe. A blank keyframe, but a keyframe nonetheless. Every keyframe can have individual objects on it, however you can attach frames to any given keyframe and these frames are basically just extending the length of that keyframe. Whatever you happen to do in the keyframe will affect all of those frames. So if we just draw squiggles on the on the stage here, then those are going to be present in all of these frames. Now if we just want to do something like this, as you can see it's going to influence the keyframe too. They're basically one and the same. But we can create a new keyframe here, in which case the stuff we do in this keyframe does not influence the stuff that happens in this frame, so we can have totally different stuff. But I bet you guys are wondering now, how are we going to actually make something move without making about a billion different keyframes? Well, granted, yeah, you could use the keyframe method to make a stuff like that, but it wouldn't be smooth at all. But here is basically what we're going to do. In order to actually move something, we, we're going to need to, unless we use the shape tree, but I'm not going to talk about that, we're going to need to actually use symbols. So what we're going to do is make a basic object, a blue box, and we're going to convert it to a symbol like so. Now you're generally going to want to make it a graphic type of an object, so make sure this is selected, and now you want to type in a name, let's just call it box for now, self-explanatory. Now we've converted it into a symbol successfully. So we can just drag this around easily, move it around the scene. Now of course we still got the issue that that box is not going anywhere throughout this particular frame. Not separately from the keyframe at least. We can of course copy it over into this so we can have it in two different possessions, but it's just jumping around here. But here is where the magic of Flash comes in. If you right-click between the two keyframes and select Create Motion Tween, surprise, surprise, Flash will automatically calculate where that object is going to be throughout every given frame in between, and it will show it in various intermediate stages. So it smoothly slides across the screen. Well, it doesn't look that smooth because of the low frame rate. But here's the interesting thing. You can even move around the endpoints uh, where it's going to be, like point A and point B, and it will still automatically update you can even rotate your object, uh, stretch and skew it, and so forth. And it will still deform, distort, and warp the object so that it will wind up getting into that new state. Now, you can also add more frames to this. So if you, say, want to add like uh, five extra frames, then it will take twice as long, and yes, it will continue automatically calculating based on the new length. We can add as many frames as we want to stretch out the animation and slow it down. <clears throat> now, that's all good and useful and all, but I know you guys are probably wondering, uh, what good is that just to move a box around? Well, here's the thing. You can do that with any symbol whatsoever, whether you've got any symbol that happens to be like a graphic or a movie clip or something like that. Even bit imported objects like bitmaps. So, let's pull up the library. And what I just did there is I hit Control L. That's the hotkey for bringing it up. It's a lot faster than going through the window and uh, doing that, I find. But I guess that's the key. Of, that's kind of the thing about a shortcut. 
Now we're going to add a bitmap to the library. So let's just take this little object here. Now we imported it and it's just a bitmap right here. It's not actually a symbol so we cannot do motion tweening with it yet. Well granted the Macromedia Flash will if you try and tween a bitmap from point A to point B it will automatically, now watch the library, it will automatically convert it into a new symbol here so that you can do that. But that's sloppy work, and I'm sure you want unique names for all your symbols. So let's uh, let's get rid of that. And remove the tween. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our little individual sprite here, and we'll stretch it out. Ooh, ugly smoothing. I almost forgot. When you import stuff in Flash, as far as bitmaps are concerned, it will automatically smooth them out to try and make them look nice, but it kind of looks like crap. You're probably going to want to disable that so you can do it by going to the bitmap, clicking properties, and unclicking allow smoothing. And there you've got a pixelated sprite. Just what you always wanted, right? This can be useful if you want to make like a retro stuff and things like that, like old video game kind of style. However, first thing we're going to need to do here is create a new symbol. And we're not going to let it just do it automatically because that just gives it the uh, the unimaginative name of Tween One. Yeah, try and remember that after about a thousand different tweens have been created. Anyways, so basically we have our sprite here, and we can do with it exactly the same kind of stuff we could do with the box earlier. So yeah, he slides across the screen. Yay, levitation! He's hovering. Now, that looks all crude. What use is that still? Well, we can even do this with animated GIF files. So basically what we've got here is uh, we had a GIF file that was made of individual different bitmaps that we imported into the Flash file. Each of these individual bitmaps was a frame in the GIF animation, so they were imported separately with the unimaginative names of bitmap 3, bitmap 4, bitmap 5, bitmap 6, bitmap 7. But it also created this little movie clip here called PrinceMoney.gif. Now we're going to want to change this to a graphic type. Actually, it says PrinceMoney.gif copy. <coughs> and for that matter, let's uh, give it a unique name. Now this individual thing, if you put it on the stage, you will see that uh, once you anim once you actually hit the play button it will actually start playing that animation. So Flash has done most of the work for you in actually animating that little GIF file there. <coughs> yeah, I just got this image off the web, so don't ask. Either way, what you can also do with this kind of a thing is, again, well, it's a symbol, so you can still motion tween it. So yeah, while it's printing out the money there, it slides across the screen, it can shrink, it can, well, you, you get the idea, right? Yeah. So that's basically the basics of making a, well, basic animation. <clears throat> However, one thing I want to let you know is that you can only have one symbol, one symbol per layer as far as the uh, animated stuff. If you try to, say, tween something that has uh, two particular objects that's trying to go from point A to point B, Flash might get confused. As you can see, it bunched these things together in this automatic stupid thing where it tried to consolidate by grouping them together into a bigger symbol. But they just move in a uniform fashion. They do not move separately. And then it just jumps over to this frame here. So let's uh, get rid of that. And uh, yeah, let's get rid of that ugliness, remove the motion tween, and remove this unimaginative tween two thing. Apparently, it does it for that too. Now if we try and say uh, get around that by doing this, creating the motion tween, and then later tacking on another one of those boxes to go somewhere else, it's not going to work the way we expect it. It just vanishes. It doesn't automatically slide, and really if you want to think about it, there would be no way for Flash to differentiate which one is supposed to go to which destination. So yeah, one object per tween layer. Now there are a few 
Now that's going to wind up being a little bit cumbersome later on when we're going to have to be dealing with layers that have a with uh, various different objects and scene switches because you're going to have so many layers but thankfully there are little ways of getting around that. I will probably wind up explaining those things later but for now I think I'm running out of time so adios guys.